welcome you all to the MSP lecture series on advanced transformatory chemistry. In my previous lecture, I started discussion on coordination theory with a little bit of historical background and initiated discussion on Werner's coordination theory. So, let me continue from where I had stopped with his uh, uh, systematic experimental work and conductivity measurement, he established geometries for different coordination number, I would say secondary valency. And then he did not stop at this stage, he went on further to isolate these compounds. And in fact, he isolated these compounds where you can see two ethylene diamine bidentate ligands are there. And then these compounds showed optical properties. And when again he presented his work, Jorgensen argued with him and he ridiculed making any optically active compound without having a chiral carbon. So, he firmly believed that in order to have an optically active compound, there must be a chiral carbon. So, he was more inclined towards uh, organic chemistry understanding, uh, although he was an excellent uh, experimental inorganic chemist of that time. However, when he heard this kind of criticism, Werner, he took this as a challenge and he made this compound here. You can see here, he made this octahedral compound. In this one, there is no carbon ligand at all. So, you have only OH is there and ammonia is there. He made this compound and he separated both the optical isomers D and L. And then when it was shown, eventually people started respecting Werner's coordination theory. And after the establishment of optical activity of this compound without having a carbon and they started appreciating his theory. And uh, now uh, people thought that coordination theory is complete and eventually he was given Nobel Prize uh, in 1913. It is a very interesting uh, molecule first of its kind you can see this is optically active compound. Of course, later optically active compounds were made with the trisethylene diamine and all those things, but this one without having a carbon atom. Now, let us come to the nomenclature of coordination compounds. There are two systems for indicating the oxidation number of the metal. The more commonly used system indicates the oxidation number in Roman numerals in parentheses after the name of the metal or you can take the symbol and put superscript in the form of uh, Arabic number uh, with plus or minus denoting whether it is cation or anion. For example, uh, chromium 2 plus, uh, cobalt 3 plus uh, something. Also one can also use cobalt in the bracket Roman numerals indicating its oxidation state. Both are in the practice. The other system puts the charge of the coordination complex in Arabic numbers in parentheses after the metal, something like this something like this one can use or something like this one can use. It appears to me this is more appropriate rather than writing like this and this should be used only when we are using a symbol. And even when you are expanding any element like chromium, then it should again come in okay, Roman numerals in the bracket. And here writing full name of an element and putting two plus as a superscript also does not look good. This is the correct practice. So, using either system, if the transmetal complex is negative in charge, the name of the metal ends in 8. So, that means if we have an anionic complex, the name of the metal pronounced at the end ending with the term 8. Okay. For example, if you take this one, this is anionic compound because platinum is in plus 2 state and uh, diamine tetrachloroplatinate. So, in this one, this is named as diamine tetrachloroplatinate. So, it is anionic. If it is neutral uh, or cationic compound, then simply we should use the term the way it is. For metals with Latin names, the negative charge complex uses ferrate. For example, when it is an anionic complex, we for the following, what the name we should use is given here. For iron, we should use ferrate. For lead, we should use plumbate. For gold, we should use aurate. And for silver, we should argentate and for tin stannate and for copper cuprate. And of course, palladium palladate, platinum platinate we use, cobalt cobaltate, iridium iridate. So, it continues like that. The complete name of the complex must also indicate the presence of geometric isomers. Let us have a different uh, ligands present on a metal. And if that is the case and if there is a possibility of seeing more than one isomer, 
then the name given should also indicate the type of isomer we are talking about. Then the prefixes such as cis, trans, meridional or facial should be included in the front of the complex when we write it. In addition, uh, stereoisomer is also possible with the tetrahedral and octahedral geometries. In that case, there is a possibility of optical isomerism, then optical isomers also should be represented in the name by using prefixes something like this. So, one should use these uh, symbols in front of optical isomers to denote their uh, the nature of the isomer. And if you have bridging ligands that bridges two metal centers, one should use the term mu here. And of course, when a ligand is bridging two metal centers, it is obvious that minimum two are needed when the ligand acts as a bridging ligand. In that one, there is no need to put any subscript two here. Although if you put subscript two, nothing wrong with it. But without subscript also, one can write that indicates this ligand is bridging two metal centers. In case if the ligand is bridging three metal centers, then mu 3 should be there where 3 is subscript. Okay. So, mu 3 hyphen we should write the complex formula. And if we collating bidentate ligands are there in a complex, then they have to be denoted using a prefix eta 2. And of course, eta 2 is not used now, kappa 2 is used. Eta 2 was earlier used for bidentate ligand. Uh, making connection to the same metal and for a tridentate ligand making connection to the same metal is eta 3 or tetradentate ligand all 4 donor atoms are binding to the same metal is called eta 4 and if 5 donor atoms are emerging from a ligand and going to the same metal then eta 5 etc. For example, cyclopentadienyl. So, when we have olefinic ligands eta symbol makes sense because it mentions hapticity whereas in other conventional ligands if they are bridging non olefinic ligands it is better to use kappa rather than eta. Now let us look into isomerism and you know that isomers are nothing but compounds have the same formula but different structures. So again these isomers can be classified into two type of compounds one is structural isomers another one is stereo isomers. In the structural isomers we end up with lot of isomers here atoms have different uh, connectivities uh, that means you can also have coordination isomers and linkage isomers. And in the coordination isomers ligands and counter ions exchange places whereas in linkage isomers ligand coordinates to metal in a different ways. That means you have a ligand having more than one type of donor atom in it. In that case what happens uh, one donor atom uh, either either of the donor atoms can bind uh, resulting in linkage isomerism. For example, if you take NO2 group either N can coordinate to the metal center or uh, O can establish a link to the metal. So, nitrito or nitro we call them. Okay. Similarly, uh, we come across the stereoisomers here atoms have the same connectivity but different spatial arrangement. Okay. Stereoisomers atoms have the same connectivities but different spatial arrangements are there. For example, M A 2 B 2 is there. Okay. In that case what happens? Uh, 2 A can be uh, opposite to each other or of the same side. So, that results in geometric isomers that means ligands have different spatial arrangements about metal center. In that case we can have cis and trans geometry especially in case of square planar complexes and also in case of octahedral complexes when we have M A 2 B 2 in case of square planar complexes and M A 4 B 2 or M A 2 B 4 in case of octahedral complexes we come across cis and trans isomers whereas in case of octahedral compounds when we have M A 4 B 2 or M A 2 B 4 uh, we have cis and trans isomers. Similarly, when we have M A 3 B 3 we end up with having two isomers which are called facial and meridional. In facial all the three ligands are in the same phase whereas in meridional all are in different phase. Then if the compounds are non superimposable mirror images then we call them as optical isomers. I have given some examples for various isomerism. The first one is ionization isomerism. You can see here in case of ionization isomerism uh, what we have is a chloride is secondary valency and sulphate is primary valency. 
whereas in this one other isomer sulfate is secondary valency whereas chloride is primary valency. In hydration uh, we can have uh, several isomers for example, you take uh, first one hexa aqua cobalt 3 chloride and in this one 6 water molecules are secondary valency whereas in this one the second one the composition is same we have 6 uh, water molecules and 3 chlorides, but they change their positions in this one 5 water molecules are inside the secondary valency and 1 chloride is there whereas here we have 2 chlorides outside and water of hydration is there and in this case we have 4 water molecules are there inside and uh, 2 chlorides are there. Uh, one chloride is primary valency and two water molecules are hydrated. So, that means here it should be 4 here read it as 4. Linkage isomerism as I mentioned when we have two donor atoms in a ligand either of them can bind at a time. So, here in this one if the nitrogen is binded you can call nitro form and if the oxygen is binded O form you can O nitrite nitrito or N nitrito. So, one can mention like this. So, uh, you have linkage isomerism we also come across linkage isomerism in case of NCS where N can either coordinate to the metal or S can coordinate to the metal and coordination isomerism. So, here if you see uh, we have one cation and one anion and if you just look into the ratio one platinum one palladium is there and uh, four ammonia and four chlorides are there and the composition remains same in, in these complexes. But here cation is a platinum compound and anion is a palladium compound whereas here palladium is a cationic compound and platinum is an anion compound. Okay, so, this is coordination isomerism and similarly we come across in case of octahedral compounds also we have hexamine cobalt 3 plus a cation and uh, hexacyano chromate as an counter anion whereas here hexamine uh, chromium 3 plus is a cation whereas here hexacyano cobaltate is the anion. So, they are coordination isomers and coordination position isomers will come into picture where we can see. Uh, cobalt 3 is here and cobalt 4 is there and cobalt 4 is here and cobalt 3 is here rest remains more or less same or there may be some change depending upon the change of oxygen state anion ligands may take different positions. So, this is called coordination position isomerism. Then coordination polymerism again here we consider this diamino dichloroplatinum. So, if you just look into it 1 platinum 2 amine 2 chlorides composition is 1 is to 2 is to 2 and now we have a combination of cationic and anionic compounds here and again if you say 2 metals are there and uh, 4 ammonia 4 chloride means again the composition remains same this is coordination polymerism and same thing is observed in rest of these uh, complexes as well. And then conformation isomerism, conformation isomerism can be seen exclusively in the case of uh, uh, nickel D8 system some compounds can exist in uh, tetrahedral geometry and the same compound can exist in uh, uh, square planar geometry. For example, if you take uh, uh, dibromo bis diphenyl ethyl phosphine complex this can show both square planar and tetrahedral geometry. So, dark brown diamagnetic square planar and dark green paramagnetic tetrahedral. So, this is called conformation isomerism and summation isomerism here you can see uh, the number of constituent ligands remains same the composition remains same and if you take here we have taken is a bromo ethylamine we are taking chloroethylamine but when bromo is there chloride is in secondary valency when chloroamine is there bromide is secondary valency that means he, this is called summation isomerism and the ligand isomerism is there in case of ligand isomerism you can take uh, like uh, normal uh, propylamine is there and here isopropylamine is there. So, in this case what happens uh, you see ligand isomerism is there. And valence isomerism was proposed by Jorgensen in 1955 he was one of the students of Jorgensen and here you can see uh, the valence isomerism here uh, valency varies in this one ok. And then spin isomerism is also uh, shown uh, in complexes wherever uh, the magnetism is temperature dependent or sometime what happens with temperature high spin complex become low spin complex and low spin complex become high spin complex when it is cooled this is called spin isomerism. That means we have a several isomerization processes there and some examples are there in each case. When we go to polydentate ligands a typical example is ethylene diamine both the amines of the ligand can bind to the same metal forming a ring. So, this is called chelate ring 
and then many pollinated ligands having longer chain capable of donating all the donor atoms binding or establishing bond with the donor atoms to the same metal then they are called chelate, com chelate ligands and such compounds are called chelate compounds or chelate complexes. A typical example for pollinated ligand is uh, this hexadentate ligand EDTA. EDTA abbreviation expansion is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid and then if it is anionic then it is called tetraacetate. So, you can see EDTA 4 minus and here 2 nitrogens are there and uh, 4 carboxylate oxygens will be establishing and it forms stable complexes with most of the transit elements and also some of the main group elements. So, EDTA can wrap around a metal ion to coordinate at 6 coordination sites. Uh, ligands that bind to more than one site are called chelating ligands. And linkage isomerism I had mentioned for example, if you take this NO2 minus uh, when it is binding by oxygen we call nitrito. So, that means the moment the ligands name is pronounced as nitrito you should assume that in this one in NO2 oxygen is connected to the metal ion and not nitrogen. And when the nitrogen is coordinated simply use the term nitro that indicates it is the N that is coordinating to metal not the either oxygen atoms. And linkage isomerism and uh, involve ligands that may bond via different sites again I showed you in the previous slide that I have uh, written the structures here. And also interesting thing is these compounds have different properties and also colors you can see when nitro is there where nitrogen is coordinated it is orange uh, yellow in color and in this one it is orange red or something like that. And stereoisomerism, stereoisomers have the same connectivities but different spatial arrangements. In geometric isomers the ligands have different spatial arrangements about the metal ion. Optical isomers are compounds with not superimposable mirror images they come under stereoisomerism. And uh, geometric isomerism, geometric isomers differ in the geometric arrangement of the ligands around the central metal I already mentioned. For example, you consider this diamino dichloroplatinum when two amines are cis to each other we call it cis platin and when they are trans to each other we call it the trans platin. So, that means this compound exhibits geometric isomerism. And cis and trans compounds can be separated or they can be prepared using different methods. And of course, very very nicely trans effect was used again Warner used trans effect to make these isomers in their pure form starting from appropriate uh, metal complexes. In one case he used a tetra ammonium platinum compound he used in another case he used tetra chloroplatinate he used. I shall tell you uh, about trans effect and preparation of uh, different isomers using trans effect at later stage. And optical isomers, octahedral complexes containing polyentate ligands can also form optical isomers. Complexes with 3 rings, 3 bidentate ligands for example, ethylene diamine is there in this compound 3 ethylene diamines are uh, having uh, bound to cobalt in generating tris ethylene diamine cobalt 3 plus compound. So, it can be viewed like a propeller with 3 blades. The structure can be either left or right handed with non superimposable mirror images ok I have shown here something like this. Then the right handed isomer requires going clockwise to get from the upper triangle to the lower triangle. So, that means if you start tilting this one basically what happens it comes to this one. The prefix for this isomer is given as del something like this. Uh, you should remember that right handed isomer you just take this one and do clockwise rotation one rotation and then you will end up with this one. So, in that case what happens you should give a prefix del. On the other hand a left handed isomer requires going counter clockwise to get from the upper triangle to the lower one. For example, instead of doing uh, clockwise rotation perform anti clockwise rotation and then for this one the prefix for this isomer is del. So, this is how you can distinguish between two optical isomers in among coordination compounds. And this is a typical octahedral compound. Uh, let us look into some isomers cobalt 3 when it is treated with ethylene diamine it can react in a different form and several products can be formed. One such compound having 2 ethylene diamine 2 chloride in the secondary valency is violet and the trans isomer is green. So, that means when you are making this one obviously says 
there is a possibility of formation of trans compound and the trans compound is green whereas cis compound is violet. When you are using the excess of ethylene diamine, yeah, the reaction also results in the formation of a yellow product having this composition where we have tris ethylene diamine cobalt 3 plus. So, if, if I ask you to write all possible isomers in this reaction, you should be able to write all possible. So, determine the number of isomers of each of the products, label any enantiomer with the proper prefix either this or that one whether you make clockwise or anti-clockwise rotation. The first one is the yellow product is this one tris ethylene diamine. So, of course, once when you write this one you will come to know that there is a possibility of writing another non superimposable mirror image of this one. So, we have this one. So, these two are that means this one gives two isomers and besides giving one geometric isomer and this one of them can be geometric isomer as well. And then when you go for this one having two ethylene diamine two chloride there is a possibility of having two isomers here. So, one trans isomer one cis isomer and cis isomer can also exhibit optical isomerism uh, having uh, non superimposed mirror image something like this. So, that means uh, the violet product consists of a pair of optical isomers and then the green product is non optically active because it has a mirror plane. So, that means we have 1, 2, 3 isomers are there and with uh, trisethylene diamine we have 2 more isomers. So, totally when you interact cobalt 3 chloride with ethylene diamine there is a possibility of making 5 isomers. So, before I conclude this lecture let me bring to your attention the nomenclature of coordination compounds once again. You should remember these things and one thing you should remember now irrespective of earlier convention was irrespective of uh, we used to name anion ligands first, neutral ligands second and then cationic ligands at the end and then we used to bring the name of the metal. So, now the convention is irrespective of the nature of the ligands we should use only alphabetical order. The alphabetical order should be used while pronouncing or naming a complex. If ionic the positive ion is named first then the negative ion ok. You should remember if the ionic complex if complex is ionic and if it is cationic the positive ion is named first and then the negative ion at the end. And then the inner coordination sphere is indicated by square brackets while writing we should remember in the formula the metal is written first followed by the ligands. And here does not matter whether you write in alphabetical order or not does not matter, but metal should be written first in the square bracket followed by the ligands. In naming the ligands are named first then the metal. In naming the ligands are named first in alphabetical order ok irrespective of the nature of the ligands and then the metal. If the ligand itself contains a prefix in its name say dimethylamine or triphenylphosphine then again if um, more than one is there. So, then to avoid confusion we should use a different kind of prefix to indicate the number of ligands and also number of such atoms present or group present in the ligand itself and the ligand name is placed in parentheses. For example, dimethylamine is there in that case if two ligands are there in the coordination sphere then it rather look odd to say di dimethylamine instead you, sh you should say bis dimethylamine. So, that means appropriate prefix should be used uh, for them. For example, uh, for 2 instead of di use bis and for 3 instead of using tri use tris and then for 4 you use tetra instead of tetra use tetrakis for 5 use pentakis or 6 hexakis, 7 heptakis, 8 octakis, 9 nonakis and 10 decakis. So, ligands are listed in alphabetical order ignoring any prefix ok. Uh, you should remember if, irrespective of how many ligands are there the first letter of the ligand should be considered while labeling them or naming them in alphabetical order. If aqua and amine ligands are there no matter how many aqua ligands, water ligands are there and how many ammonia are there irrespective of that one the one that comes first is aqua and then M. So, first ammonia should come and then aqua should come. So, this is how it should be named and while naming while considering the alphabetical order ignore any prefixes that indicates the number of ligands present. Most ligands have special names with all negatively charged ligands ending in the letter O for example, chloro, bromo, iodo something like that. The most uh, neutral ligands retain their usual names except ammonia ok. For example, ammonia we call amine 
and water we call aqua and CO we call carbonyl. So, name of uh, common ligands I have listed here uh, bromo, carbonato, chloro, cyano. So, H minus hydrido, OH minus hydroxo and O2 oxo. Some examples I have shown here to make you familiar with naming. Uh, here you can see dichloro, tetramine, cobalt, 3 chloride. And here if you take monochloro or you can say monochloro or simply chloro is also monochloro or chloro is fine. There is no need to indicate when we write chloro it obviously indicates that there is only one chloride is there. So, uh, no need to put mono, chloro, pentamine, cobalt, 3 chloride. And here uh, this is a Fischer salt, potassium, hexa, nitro, nitrito, cobaltate. Nitrito means you should know the donor atom that is binding to the metal center. And here in this one dichlorotriamine platinum 2, tetrachloroplatinate 2. So, you have to see tetrachloroplatinate again anionic complex should come later. And in this one Magnus green salt, tetramine platinum 2 and then tetrachloroplatinate minus. So, this one similarly you can name these things and you can practice. Uh, let me stop at this juncture. Uh, continue talking about uh, more interesting facts about coordination compounds in my uh, next lecture. Until that have a wonderful time in reading and understanding chemistry.